The first true sign of winter for me are the low-hanging, foreboding clouds. Northeastern Pennsylvania, and especially Scranton, has a bad reputation for overcast skies. Summer 2019 is now long behind us. That means that there will be plenty of cold, dreary, miserable days ahead. What can I say? That's winter in northeastern Pennsylvania, and the older I get, the more I dislike it. And the older I get, the more I dislike it. And the older I get, the more I dislike it. And the older I get, the more I dislike it. The temperature is a real feel of about 17 degrees. Yeah, I said 17 degrees. And over at Tower 60, the Steamtown Holiday Train is making a switchback move to prepare for boarding. While that's happening, what I perceive to be the Delaware Lackawanna's P075, just in from the Ardent Mills at Mount Pocono, glides to a stop and ties down. The holiday train takes riders to visit with Santa Claus at the Reindeer Barn, which I believe is in Moscow, Pennsylvania. As per Steamtown, the train takes you through the Magic Tunnel, which quickly transports the train close to the Arctic Circle and near the North Pole. When you arrive at the station, Santa and some other North Pole natives will be nearby to help you get ready for Christmas and the holidays. There's a model train layout in the passenger station and the Reindeer Barn. There's crafts and children even get the chance to write a letter to give to Santa himself. And a goodie bag is given to each child and a cookie for each rider on this train. The Steamtown Holiday Train is only one of many Christmas trains in Pennsylvania. Other such excursions include those offered by the North Shore system. This year, the North Shore will be offering a whopping 40, yes, 40 specific excursions over the tracks of the Joint Rail Authority. In other news, the former Union Pacific Big Boy number 4012 that was on static display has been removed for restoration, but don't get too excited. The massive 4884 will be undergoing a cosmetic restoration and sadly will not be pulling trains here in the east. Built for the Union Pacific by Alco of Schenectady, New York as one of 25 big boys to haul heavy freight across the Continental Divide, the big boys are famous as being among the most powerful steam locomotives ever built. The 4012 is one of eight big boys that have been preserved and the only one on display here on the East Coast, and unfortunately there's no visitor access to the locomotive during its restoration process. However, the National Park Service said that it will provide occasional updates on the progress of the restoration on the park's website and through its social media outlets. The restoration is expected to take several months and no completion date has been announced. Sitting in its place is the Spick and Span Philadelphia and Reading T1 number 2124. The Baldwin built 484 was originally built as a 280 around 1924 and it was rebuilt by the Reading Company and Outshop in January of 1947 as the 484 Class T1 Northern that you see here. This heavy freight engine pulled long trains of anthracite coal, the Reading's main commodity. It was also used in the Reading Company's Reading Rambles excursions. The Big T1 was purchased by Nelson Blount in 1963 and is one of nine remaining Reading Company locomotives.
About two weeks ago, I found myself on the north side of town and thought it would be a good idea to snoop around the new and improved Green Ridge Yard. The DL is wasting no time putting its recent track upgrades to good use and mingling among the typical long lines of dull gray covered hoppers was a bright spot. The Halliburton Company's number 7998 is one of a small group of two bay covered hoppers painted pink in honor of breast cancer awareness and research. It falls into the ranks of those in the 7900 and 8000 number series and marks the second one that I've caught in the region. The first one being the 7996 which I caught nearly four and a half years ago in June of 2015 on the Canadian Pacific train 458. The 7996 was set out at Taylor Yard and picked up by the DL and made the same round trip journey back then that's being made by the 7998 today. In another sighting, the 7993 is seen under the crystal blue skies of Johnstown, Colorado. The track that this long line of hoppers is occupying is about four miles long and probably served to bring in a sugar beet harvest at one time. Now it's used to park empty cars and sometimes you can even find oil tankers here and at other times there's long flat cars that are used to transport those huge wind turbine blades. But the Halliburton hoppers aren't the only pink celebrities on the rails. TTX is bringing awareness to millions with its pink boxcar project and the Hub Group Container Company is doing the same with their cause container campaigns. For Trains 21, call me AC.